Hi, today we are going to talk about the formations of solutions. Uh, this is going to be a two video process. In the first video we're going to talk about um, why solutions form. And in the second part we are going to talk about heat of solution as well as properties of solutions. Dissolving. So how a solution is made, things are going to dissolve into um, a liquid. A solution, remember, is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Now, homogeneous means that you cannot see the individual parts. The two parts we are going to look at are the solute, that is the thing being dissolved, and the solvent the thing doing the dissolving. A uh, common example of a solvent is water. You may have heard um, in a commercial on TV that this product is a great solvent. It will pick up anything. So uh, there are three different ways that things can dissolve in water. One is dissociation, two is dispersion, and three is ionization. We will cover each one of these in particular and go through a couple of examples. So the first one, dissociation of an ionic compound. You may have heard uh, your parents tell you when you were younger to be careful who you associate yourself with, meaning be careful about who you um, hang out with or are around. Dissociation is the exact opposite. It's when two things aren't going to be hanging around anymore. Instead, they are going to be pulled apart. Um, in this process, an ionic compound is going to separate into its two ions as it dissolves. Now this is possible only because of water's special ability to be a polar molecule. When I say polar, it has two poles, a negative pole and a positive pole that are both magnetically charged. They're like little magnets on the ends of the molecules. Now, chlorine atoms are negatively charged, and sodium atoms, the little purple ones, are positively charged. So that means the negative pole on the water molecule can line up with the positive sodiums and pull them away. And the positive hydrogen parts of the water molecule can line up with the negative part of the chlorine atom and pull it away. That's going to lead to the dissociation of the ions and thus the dissolving of the salt crystal. Dispersion. Um, sugar is a covalently bonded compound. It is not ionic. But it is also a polar molecule. So because it is polar and water is polar, the water can still sneak in between the um, various sugar molecules in a sugar crystal. For instance, a piece of hard candy, like a Jolly Rancher, or a candy cane. And the water can get in between those sugar crystals and pull them apart because of the partial charges on the sugar molecules and the partial charges on the water molecules. So it can separate the individual sugar molecules and cause them to disperse or break away from each other and the crystal. Uh, the last one we are going to talk about today is the ionization of a molecular compound. It's going to be similar to dissociation but with a molecular compound. One molecule breaks the other apart creating an ion. We are going to ionize one of the two molecules. This is common with acids and bases. In the example we are going to look at, we are going to look at hydrochloric acid, HCl, and we're going to put it in water. Now what this is going to result in is a free chloride anion and the hydrogen will move to the water and create a positive cation. So the picture, we have a chlorine and a hydrogen atom covalently bonded, put them in water, the water pulls that hydrogen to it, leaving the chloride to hang out by itself. This is going to create the acid. So that is how ionization works. It is literally going to be the molecules pulling each other apart and forming an ion. 